Alright, we're going to do a quick tutorial on adding actors in iSphere. So, I'm going to open up an overworld section because that's mostly what I'm familiar with, but you can do this with shrines as well. And we'll get there eventually. Earthworld sections take longer to load than shrine sections. So if you've got a bad computer or maybe can't handle overworld sections, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't edit shrine sections. Um, Although it does limit what actors you may be able to steal from the Jasons easily. So, here's a little something I've prepared earlier. You can see that these enemies don't normally exist in the game at this point. Uh, these Bacoblins actually ride horses. Um... So, if we want to copy one of these Bacoblins, that's how I create pretty much any actor. I copy it from something else. You just go over here, select it with the right mouse button, and then click Copy JSON. We're going to create a new one. As a general rule, it's best to use dynamic actors. Static actors normally are used for linking with other objects um, and if they fail they will crash the game whereas dynamic actors are normally supposed to be standalone objects if they fail to load correctly or aren't configured correctly they just won't load so general rule dynamic is better unless you're using something that needs static I could be wrong about the difference between those but that's my understanding and I use dynamic for everything you'll have less crashes with dynamics. So when we create, add an actor, it's just this random torch. To change it, we've copied this actor, we're going to import it here. Now this is a copy. Uh, you'll see it has its own hashes. Basically, never touch these unless you know what you're doing. These are used for behind the scenes data. The hash ID is basically a unique identifier. So no other enemy in the game should have this hash ID. Uh, the CRC hash is generated from the name and a bunch of other stuff. Basically anytime you change the actor, the CRC will also change. So this guy's floating in the air, that's no good. We need to deselect this guy to move him around. You can select multiple actors and move them around, but generally you just want one, otherwise you'll like put them in a wall or something, and that's no good. Cool, we've put our little actor here. Uh, he's a senior Bacoblin, he looks red. Um, because all the Bacoblins, this will happen with most enemies, because they all share the same model, even different levels won't display with the correct textures. That's fine, you can see it's a Bacoblin. Um, the JSON is what defines a lot of its specifics. So for example we can see this Bacoblin has a spear equipped um, I think this is a Dragonbone Spear. Y you can find a JSON list online that'll basically tell you what every weapon is. So you can give him whatever whatever weapon you want. Uh, if you're looking to try something out, I recommend having a look at some of the magic rods. Any enemy can wield them and it's actually kind of cool. It's not something that appears in the vanilla game. Um, I don't know what all of these do, but generally you'll find, you know, they all do something. Um, level sensor mode is an important one. This is basically enemy scaling. 
if you have this value set to 1, then enemies will go to higher levels as they level up. If you give enemies unique weapons, when they scale, they'll often lose those weapons. So if you want, say, your Bacoblin to have a magic rod all the time, turn off level sensor mode. If you don't mind what weapon he has, you just give him all the Bacoblin weapons, that's fine. You can turn it on, you can start him as any level, and he'll just scale as the player progresses. Uh, you can see this one is riding a horse. Uh, you can actually assign any horse in the game to them. By default, I think Bacoblins only ride Game Rom Horse 20, 21, 22, 23, something like that. They're basically all shit horses, um, but you can give them good ones. There's nothing stopping you. You can give them, uh, you can give them the giant horse probably. I've given one of these guys a bear. Let's see if we can find him. There's one of these guys who has a bear. That's really, really fun. I think it might be one of these guys. You can open up as many of these as you want to have a look. Although I'd recommend not moving actors. Be, just be careful when you move actors that you don't accidentally select an area. Sometimes I've accidentally brought a mesh with me. That, like, don't do that. So this one's got a bear. That's fantastic. Um, there's a, a lot of flexibility, a lot of potential for things that don't appear in the game. Um, I will show you guys one more thing about Jason's. This guy, the Giants, the Hinoxes, they can have Rome type set to one. This is the coolest thing ever that doesn't appear in the game that I found. All of them will be set to zero in vanilla. You can set it to one and they'll just wander around and sort of casually look for Link. It's kind of cool. It's not going to change the world, but um, it is a fun little thing that you can do that I've done. Bosses will have unique names. One thing you do need to be careful of, uh, we're just going to deselect all of these, this little button in here. Don't use this one. That's delete. Don't do that. We're going to find another actor. Probably have a problem. Actually, I know what's a good one. Guardian... No, there's not one here. Bacoblin. I want to show you something to watch out for. Well, this this is one I've created, I think. Oh, rotate. This is an important value. If you don't want them to be looking the same way, use rotate. Whenever you have a group of enemies together, you want to rotate them. Or else, when you approach, they'll all sort of be looking the same way. It can look kind of freaky. Sometimes you can use that for really good effect. If you put like a bunch of things in a canyon that are sort of waiting for Link, but 90% of the time you want to give them a value. Um, point 0.1 isn't that much. I normally just use round numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. You can give it whatever you want. Just, you know, rotate is useful. If it doesn't have rotation, just use rotation add Y. Generally, you don't need these fellows. Um, maybe, maybe for some things, but as a general rule, the, just the Y and X set is good. Scaling is also really useful. You can scale an actor. I don't think it happens in the main game, but you can just make something that's three times bigger than normal. I probably wouldn't go above three because at that point you'll start to have weird textures and hitboxes. Um... And no guarantees it will work properly, but sometimes it can be a little fun. Okay. What we want to look for is link to object. There must be one here. There's some all over the place, I swear. Hey, I swear I have a hard time finding random enemies most of the time that don't have this. Let's look for a moblin. Oh, sorry, moroblin. That's what they're called. In the files. I haven't added any of these. What's this guy got? Hey, uh, seemingly I can't find one. 
you'll often find enemies have link to object or link to rail or link to guide rail, something like that. As a general rule, you don't want to copy that stuff over. Um, sometimes if you like link to an object, it'll link to like an area where if you defeat all the enemies, it'll open a treasure chest. And if you keep that, carry it somewhere else, um, that treasure chest may not unlock when you defeat the enemies you're supposed to. The player might get really confused. That's no good. Um, link to rail. If you don't have them in the right location, the enemy may not spawn at all. And a link to an invisible guide rail. Um, if you want to set up rails, if you want to set up complicated little um, events like that, it can be really useful. But if you're coming in, you just want to put some enemies down, you want to put some chests down, you're not very sure about whether you understand all that, make sure you don't have your objects linking to anything. It can be a really powerful tool when used right, and it can really mess you up if you don't if you include it and you don't know what it does. So we've added our actor. I'm actually going to delete this guy because I don't want him here. You can add actors; they'll appear in the game. But there's one more thing that we need to do. Uh, just because you've added an actor doesn't mean the game will know to save it when you de defeat it. So, you want to find bootup.pack, here's one I prepared earlier, go into game data, these two files you want to unpack, most people will say just use switch toolbox, I'm still using BOTW unpacker, which I think is a great little tool, I don't have any problems with it. Switch Toolbox is a great tool, but sometimes trying to edit socks or trying to edit AMP files just messes me up. But you can use wild bits, you can use, you can use whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable with. This is just the tools that I use, which probably are a little inefficient. So, we're using wild bits, we're using the YAML editor, we could use the Sark editor, I don't like it for this for some reason. We need to open it as a bimmel, because it starts with a B. We want to find save format, and I'm going to open up another instance of wild bits. I'm going to open up... I'm probably going a bit fast, but that's fine. You can slow the video down. Revivable data. Now, if you have a look, you'll see Revivable, Revivable Data 7 has a fair bit of data in it. With Save Data, you only really want to use Save Data 5 or whatever it's called. Um, this is basically a note to remember to save something. Now, I've donked this up. My giant isn't saving. I kill him, I reload the game, and he's back. I kill him, I leave the area, he's back. That's no good. So basically, you can see I've copied a ton of enemies in here. You'll find a bunch of things. Just copy something that's kind of similar to whatever it is you're doing. Not NPCs. Not, you know... Find an enemy. Find an enemy and just copy it. Like this. This'll do. This one isn't supposed to be here. I messed it up. I was very tired. So we copy this. We copy the actors type. Copy the hash ID here. I don't really know what these things do. I only know where to put them. CRC main field goes here. And we save it. And we do the same thing here. Just copy whatever it is you've done. Oh, I've already got one. Make sure it's called the right thing. Make sure it has the right numbers. This one's revivable data. My understanding is that this says to the game, bring this enemy back to life. 
and a blood moon. Um, there's a bunch of stuff here. I can't remember what all these stuff do. I just copy and paste. You'll probably find that if you have some of these numbers will tie to something else. I don't know what. You can see these are all mine. Weapon drop. I don't I don't know what these are. There, there'll be there'll be some way to change the way enemies revive here somewhat. I, I don't know what. I just do the same thing over and over again. There you have it. Once you've done that, put it all back together. I assume anyone watching a tutorial like this understands how to unpack and to pack basic Breath of the Wild formats has probably unpacked and repacked at least one of the packs a few times. If you haven't, there's heaps of tutorials. This is just a quick dirty quick dirty tutorial on basic basic Breath of the Wild section editing. Right click to select. Right click and hold to move. Make sure they aren't half in the ground because sometimes they just fall through the planet. That's no good for anyone. When you're done, click save. We're not going to because we haven't changed anything. And close. And when you're done, find your iSphere pro projects, wherever you keep them, and recompress. Grab this script. I might have one. There's a few people that have them. I don't know what it does. I think it basically... I think this script basically converts the saved section to Bimmel and then back. I don't know. Something like that. It's necessary to put this in the game. And then just find your section. What have we been editing? D5. Find your section. D5. Normally you just want the static and dynamic movements. Pop him. Pop him in your graphics pack. Once, once you've run recompression, I might put a link to this somewhere. If not, ask on the Discord. Run, recompression, wait, once. I'll show you what it looks like. Recompression. Make sure you have all of these scripts. I don't know what they do, but I have them here. Once this closes, find your section. Copy the dynamics. Maybe copy the statics if you edit statics. You can see that my F5 is corrupt. I should fix that. Um, then go to your graphics pack and put that your folder structure should look like this. Grab this from someone. I don't know what it does. It, it's critical. Um, static. Okay. Don't know what I've done there. Just pop your movements here. And then you should more or less be ready to see it in the game. So give that a try. I've probably missed a lot of stuff, but hopefully this is a brief primer on simple actor placement in Ice Spear.